world. Hey, my name is Dan Lee, Vice President for University Relations here at PLU, and I am in the brand new Clinical Learning and Simulation Center on campus, and I'm gonna take you on a tour of this amazing building. It's approximately 14,000 square feet. It doubled the square footage of our School of Nursing, and it's just opening now. We are here in the first opening semester of this building. Behind me are the names of some incredible people and foundations who helped make this place what it is. This bookstore used to be the Garfield Book Company here on Garfield Street, and when the university decided to move that operation back to the University Center, they thought this would be the best use of this space. So it's a gorgeous facility. I literally know nothing about it besides what I shared with you today. So I'm gonna go meet with the person who does, Dean Barbara Haberman. She and I are gonna go on a tour, show you all the cool things in this cool space. Barbara. Good to see you. Good Welcome. To see you. This is a beautiful space. It is. This is beautiful. So I'm here with Dean Barbara Haberman. We are here on the second floor of the building and we're going to start our tour. Barbara, so what is up here in this area? So on the second floor, right now we're standing in an area where it's a little bit of a student lounge or a student place where they can kind of do whatever they need to do separate from um, the designated spaces. On this floor we have two fairly large classrooms, which I'll be happy to show you. Great. And we also have two simulation centers, uh, the sim room itself and the associated debriefing rooms that go with that. Oh, wow. This is a, this is a huge classroom. This is a it beautiful is. space. It's really a great space. So uh, uh, this is the main classroom on the second floor? This is the largest of the two classrooms. How mm -hmm. many students can we fit in here? Um, in normal days, pre-COVID days, we could fit 96. Okay. Obviously less now with social distancing. Sure, sure. And everything's, I see everything's movable. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of courses would you typically, would the school be having in here? Um, different didactic courses in our specialty areas. Uh -huh. um, we have in some of our classes up to 78 to 80 students. So those would be the priority classes to utilize this room. Okay. And then I assume other courses are more, are smaller groups, more hands-on? Yeah. By and large, our um, didactic or what we consider our face-to-face -face, uh, classes yep. are 48 or more. Okay. Um, it's all lab classes and our simulation classes that are smaller. Okay. And I see this, I mean, this, this place is wired. We've got technology everywhere. All the tables are movable. Is all, that part of the pedagogy of the yeah, school? Yeah, all, all the tables are movable. So if you weren't at capacity, were a smaller number, you could do breakout groups and everything. Well, let's, uh, let's continue the tour. I want to see some other interesting spaces up here. Okay, so here we are coming into the second classroom. This is classroom 217. Now, Barbara, this is a smaller space, and you've got these right. kind of unique configurations. So we really wanted, um, this space can hold up to 48 students. Okay. And so we really wanted this space to be very interactive, where students could do small group work, work on case studies, evolving case studies, etc. Um, and so they have their own technology at the table and can really do good group work in this classroom. Yeah, so there's at least, I see, four video screens plus a projector plus a video conference uh, camera. I mean, the whole room is very wired. It's very wired. So in the current days we are, we could have students, some students in the classroom, uh -huh. and then we could have other students remotely video conferencing in. Wow, this is a really, this is really neat. I like the different sizes you have to work with here between the large classroom and the smaller classroom. Now, uh, we're still on the second floor. I think we should check out these sim labs that I keep hearing about, because that sounds exciting. So let's do that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Sim lab number two, room 207. <laughs> and Jody, you're the uh, you're the technician, the, the, the expert behind these sim rooms, is that right? I am the simulation director. Simulation director. So we're in one of our two simulation suites and we're in the actual sim room. Okay. Each suite has a sim room and then it has a control room where you can operate the simulation from and then a debriefing room. Debriefing is a big part of how simulation is effective. Okay. 
Um, so in these rooms, we have mannequins that have all sorts of capabilities that are what referred to as high fidelity mannequins, where you can, they can breathe, they can blink their eyes, they have pulses, they can do all sorts of things. And our goal with this, these spaces is to be able to ensure that we can provide certain experiences for students mm -hmm. that they may or may not get on the clinical ward. Okay. So for example, um, you, you could go to an obstetric unit four days in a row and maybe never see a birth happen during mm -hmm. the time you're there. Mm -hmm. So we can do those types of experiences and guarantee that the students get those experiences. So you can actually simulate a birth in, with one of these mannequins? Mm -hmm. Is, is there two mannequins in that case? There is. <laughs> okay. Okay, so here we are in the actual control room. This is where all the magic happens. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Jody said. All right, so what this is how you, what, what can you do in here? You know, for this. Whole bunch. Okay. <laughs> so give me some examples. And I see you've got some things on the screen here. What's on the, what is on this screen right here, maybe to start? So on this monitor right here, we've got our leap software, which is what controls um, our mannequin. Okay, um, mm -hmm. and then we would have um, this screen, which is our vital signs and our monitor pulled up over here. And then um, we would have our live video feed pulled up on this monitor over here. And then it would also be on this monitor over here. Mm -hmm. So this provides a, um, a full view for our simulation operations specialist. And then um, this view over here, provides our faculty that are in the room mm -hmm. um, a good view if they're not able to visualize through mm -hmm. our nice big huge um, window what's actually happening in the okay. room and the, the camera will allow us to like um, zoom in to get close-up views of what students are doing so if they're doing um, procedures we'll be able to actually see what they're, what they're actually doing mm -hmm. so putting in a Foley catheter putting in um, and I actually see the hands because you can't really see from, mm -hmm. from way back here. Um, so that'll do a step close So you can control the mannequin throughout this whole thing, right? So I can see here, I see air coming in and out, eyes blinking, the, all these vital signs. And then you record the students while they're doing the, the procedures. Mm -hmm. yes. And so then the students can learn from watching themselves as well? Is that how that how the, how the curriculum works, how the teaching works? So yeah, so what we do is we have um, usually like groups of eight that come. Mm -hmm. And so we would have like two, stu two to maybe three students in doing the simulation and then the other students will be watching the um, live feed. Mm -hmm. So then you have your active participants and then you have your, uh, your observational um, participants who mm -hmm. are either they're learning through observing. Um, and then we just we rotate so they all get exposure to those uh, scenarios and that content um, whether it's an active or a little bit more of a, um, yeah. a passive or observational um, role. So here we're entering the clinical learning lab one. All right. Wow. This is this is sure, really it's getting better and better. I feel like we just keep. I keep. Yeah, thinking we've... this is really great space. Wow. So we have a learning lab one and a learning lab two. We have the ability to put um, partitions up. Okay. Or pull the wall, so to speak, mm -hmm. so we could actually have two separate classes going. So this is only half the space. This is right only right half now. the space. Okay. So this is about four to five times the amount of space we had in our. Previous yes, I've been in Ramstead a few times, and I've been in that small room. And yes. So this, okay, this is a significant upgrade for the school. It is really a significant upgrade. Wow. And it has the ability um, in Ramstead. We just really had that one room. Mm -hmm. um, but this suite uh, has both the medication room uh, mm -hmm. with med uh, electronic medical records. Uh, it has a linen room. It has a dirty soil room, it just has much more capability, so it really mimics the hospital environment. So all the things you would have in a clinical setting, that's, mm -hmm. they're simulated here in different ways. I see the room has these windows so that you can, they can view into the space, and then um, I, and I see a student on a machine there. Are they, is that the machine that's actually distributing the medicine? Yeah, so what she's okay. doing um, in there is she's going through a patient's electronic medical record and she's looking at their medications that have been awarded for them and then pulling those out of the cart and getting wow. ready to dispense. Okay. So it gives them the ability to practice 
in an environment that's mm. safe prior to going in the clinical setting and doing it sure. with real people. And uh, so we were, I see down here, there's a mannequin in every bed and the bed looks almost identical to the sim room, the high-tech simulation mm -hmm. lab. But these are a little bit different, is that right? Yeah, these mannequins um, don't have all the capabilities that the ones in the simulation center have. Okay. So we use these mannequins more, um, for example, to learn health assessment. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to somebody's heart or you're mm -hmm. listening to somebody's lungs, What's the proper anatomical place to be doing that? It's a lot of those kinds of practicing. Mm -hmm. And so, and similarly, the headboard it's is functional. Mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. all working as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I noticed you've got this table here in the middle of the of the of the lab. Right. We have that for both sides, so you okay. can, um, you know, gather the students together and go over things, uh, review how the lab went, or you can use it to set up to begin with. This is what we're doing today in the lab. Mm -hmm. um, and it just gives them a place where they're not having to stay on the whole time, yeah. you know, for a two, two and a half hour lab. Sure. So a couple of the beds actually have cameras over them and microphones as well. So mm -hmm. is that again for remote learning capacity? Is that? Correct, yeah. Okay. And they're all stocked. Um, you know, very similar, and again, trying to get it as close to the environment. So each um, bed has also a board by it that has information about the patient, has information about how to assess pain. Mm -hmm. So any special notes you want to make. Well, this has been a great tour. Thank you, Barbara. And this has been fun, and I hope all of you have a better sense of what this amazing facility can do and will do for PLU, for PLU nursing. And of course, the entire uh, Puget Sound region, because these nurses are going out and providing needed medical care uh, in a community that realizes now more than ever that we need trained, skilled, compassionate nurses. Thank you. Thank you.